as you can see, this Bedford van is in immaculate condition and uh, it's got a beautiful paint job with a nice little bit of patina in there. Additionally, going along with that is minimal rust in all of the usual places along the top, bottom, doors and underside. But other than that, this is a really good, strong running motor if it started. Hello and welcome back to another episode of who knows what we've taken on, but we're going to do it. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will see something a little bit tidier than this. What we've decided to do is take on this 1980s Bedford restoration project that currently is looking in a very sorry state, as you can see. one down is that one free as well no? yeah so uh, I'm gonna say that's all rotten <laughs> well I think we're nearly there <laughs> um do you like what we've done with the place yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is finished then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're always ready to go back to a customer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, we might have a little sweep up, maybe. Is this original? Yeah. That's not bad, that bit, actually. <laughs> yeah. That one bit is all right. Do you like it? <laughs> so first step when taking on a project like this is to actually establish, is it watertight? In this case, the answer is no. So during the water test, this didn't fare all that well. We've noticed there is quite a lot of spots where it's coming through. Whoa, whoa. All of the vents, all of the windows, and then we've also discovered a few holes, such as up here and here, and moving along another one here. A lot of the framework in this is very, very rotten, and therefore, in order to structurally reinforce it, we're going to have to take it out and redo it bit by bit. The problem with this is, is if we took out the entire structural frame of this, the likelihood is it would just flop. So to avoid doing that, we're actually having to do it small section by small section, and hopefully it will still be in one piece at the end of it. So here we are in the wood room, which is where the magic happens. Remember, we talk in millimeters here because we're not weird. In order to do this, what we've tried to do is half lap them which improves the strength across the hole because obviously there is no movement in that whatsoever. By half lapping those two and just wedging them in there, it's very, very strong. There is very little movement and that ensures that we keep the structural rigidity throughout the vehicle. Okay, Thanks. we're gonna do a real quick speed video on how we've been doing these half laps using the table saw. Obviously safety first, which is why he is wearing safety glasses. What we've started by doing is by replacing this side here, working from the door backwards. We've managed to strip out the entire section and replace that. We've got the framework in for this side and I'm going to show that time-lapse for you now.
And if I show you into the interior, this door doesn't open. This was part one of our Bedford restoration. Thank you very much for watching. Part two will be available next week. Hopefully in the next video, we will be able to show you a bit more of the putting together of the build as opposed to all the stripping that has been involved in this episode of the van, not us, just before you get confused. Thank you for all your support. Please like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Hi, welcome to part two of the Bedford restoration. In this one, we're going to show you a little bit more of what we've progressed through this week. Enjoy. First step on this is fitting the back end on it, oi oi, and getting all the wood lined up so that we can square it all up there. So we're going to show you us trying to fit that and hopefully it will fit. Hi. I think I might have messed up here. <laughs> I don't look like it fits, I'll be honest. Oh, oh, oh look, oh, look, oh, look, 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 look. Oh. Oh, that was a... not surprised at all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? Um, I will tell you there's one design flaw there. What's that? Oh, no, it's meant to be there, that. <laughs> Split screen. It's yeah, it's designed. Oh, look. Okay. Tap two times until that's not going to fit. That one's not going to fit? No. Should it fit? Yeah. Oh, okay. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh, 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 oh. Alex, do you mind your fingers? Oh, you... Bugger. Oh, I thought there was trouble there for a minute. Well, how much you out by? Oh, five mil. That much? Right. We can leave that one in. Take that one out. Go back to the drawing board. Cry a little bit. We'll start again. Up there in your 20 degree office when I'm working down in minus four. I'm here. I'm here all the time as far as the camera's concerned. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're going to take it all apart then? Nope. Are you sure? Yep. And there's a good reason for that. Can't be asked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you passed me this because you've still got the pencil. Oh, of course, you wouldn't have one by yourself, would you? What did you want? 18? Yeah. Well, why so, would I need a pencil in my 20 degrees office? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I've said it on camera. Mm. <laughs> Is that seven? I haven't a clue. <laughs> Could be. OK. We'll say it is. <laughs> we can always edit it afterwards. <laughs> it's another day in paradise. years later. Okay, as you've seen, we've now built the half laps for the back end of the vehicle, and we're now going to get that all glued and screwed in place, and you will see that time lapse now.
Hi, thank you for watching part two of the Bedford restoration. In this build, you'll see that we've started to put together the back end of the vehicle. The next step on the build is to now start stripping out the roof and water testing the other side of the vehicle so that we can make sure we don't miss any areas where it has leaks. In the next build, hopefully we'll be able to see a little bit more of the progression and I will show that to you next Thursday. Oh. Hi, and welcome to part three of the Bedford restoration build. In this episode, you're going to see us finishing off a lot of the woodwork and doing all of the insulation, ready to get the vehicle boarded. Hi. Yep, yeah, that leaks. Yep, yeah, that leaks. That leaks. Yep. Whoa. That leaks. Uh, well, no, the top half's okay, the bottom half's boring. Oh, thank you. There is a small hole. Right here. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's water coming in there. I think there's only 37 holes. We have had to clean the vehicle off slightly. You'll notice it is less green. Over here has had quite the filler patch, which has been done with fiberglass filler just to try and get that section watertight. To insulate the vehicle, we've used 20 mil thick insulation, which has the reflective backing on both sides. And we've been cutting this to the size of the squares and then gluing them in. At some point in this vehicle's history, somebody decided to do a rewire of sorts, making both the positive and negatives for a lot of the aftermarket added appliances using a yellow and green cable, which is now making it really easy for us to trace what goes where, particularly considering some of these cables have just been cut and left. So when investigating where all the wiring is going on this vehicle, I've had a, quite an interesting discovery which is there appears to be two sets of household three core cable wrapped around the bolt on the bell housing and then strapped here, I presume to ground the engine, suggesting that the electrics on this vehicle are somewhat questionable. As we move into the engine bay, the attention to detail has been pretty well consistent. We've got some stunning wiring in here, as you can see. Now that all goes off somewhere under the vehicle and to ensure that they've got an appropriate power rated cable they've used a household 240 volt cable. 
please donate so he can buy new trousers. Thank you for watching part three of the Bedford restoration, which has been this week's progression on the vehicle. As you can see, we've been very busy trying to test this vehicle and get it watertight, as well as getting it insulated. And you will see in the next video, us boarding the vehicle out. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe. Coming up, Martin wears a hat. Curtis doesn't wear a hat. And Harry wears a hat. Hi, and welcome back to part four. As you can see, it's rather cold in the workshop as I have about seven layers on. Anyway, let's see what happens. Plan A, B, C, and D at this point is to fix all five of these spread evenly across here, mount them down, and then bend the wood round it, getting it wet and drying it off, and it's gonna stay in that curved position and be perfect. Maybe, probably our first attempt and fail. Let's do it. Well, it hasn't completely bounced back yet. Now it might. There is some curve, <laughs> but there's not a lot of curve in there at all, is there? Well, that's about we put the ratchet straps around that way. All right, gents. We'll start with the middle one. Well, it's bending a lot easier. Yeah, that is flexed a lot more. A lot easier. No pressure there. Almost needs something a little bit more there. He says pizza, but not a margarita or a Hawaiian. <laughs> See, I can read drums. Hmm? Shall we leave it then? Leave it. I'm telling your mummy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might go, I do. Right, are we ready for this? Uh, okay, let's see what happens. <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. Tied around the fire extinguisher. <laughs> Kurt oh. thought he'd uh, booby trap it for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, too. <laughs> oh dear. That oh, didn't I sound too promising, did it? Did something go, is that it going crack? Yeah, as I loosened this, um, uh, that's gone. Does it? Yeah, just pops the... Oh. Yes, it has. What about these then? That's meatloaf, says. Two out of three ain't bad. But see, I'm not sure he was talking about this though. Meatloaf, well known for his wood bending. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Is it? No. <laughs> so we've soaked it, we've heated it, we've glued it. Yeah. What more does it bloody want? So the bit that you fitted is all right, and the bit that I fitted is all right. And the bit that Kurt is fitted. In fairness, I fitted it with him, but yeah. <laughs> Curtis, if you're watching this, you're fired. So how's about we put some mitre bond on it? Yeah. And just hold it there for 20 seconds. Yeah, now you're talking my language. And then we'll give it a go at that. Loads of it though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can we also put like a couple of blobs on here, just because I'm not 100% trusting. <laughs> Speed and efficiency! Speed! Oh, oh hey, hey, here we go. Too slow. But spray it quick. <laughs> yeah, before it takes my face, you mean. So are we gonna just hold it and push it, or are we gonna do it all professionally and clamp it down and stuff? Hold it and push it then. Well, pencil. Oh. And measuring tape. Oh. No, actually, I think I've got the measuring tape. I've got pencil. <laughs> Teamwork. How exuberant are we going? Very. Why don't you come out easier? Hey, at least it's not a struggle. There you go. Right, something like that. Uh, have you pulled it up at all? Um, Let's go there. Yeah. Go on in. Right, tell me when you're ready to get your face out of the way. So why do we mess about with all that wood glue in the end? Something to do, wasn't it? Pass the time of day.
So plan A, B, C, D didn't work, so we're now on to plan F. So as plan A, B, C, D, E, F and onwards didn't work, now let's try plan G, which is to route lines into the back of the three mil panel and then try and bend it using water again. 13, 14, hang on, I've got to take the other shoe off now. <laughs> 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, that's it. I can't count any more than that. Uh, digits now. Digits. Cool. Ha. On your hand. Yep, trap my fingers in that. You've got boo-boo. Boo-boo. You want me to kiss you better? Uh, yeah, and my fingers. <laughs> big battery, little battery? Uh, big battery. Nah. I outboated you, you got two little batteries. Right, I might as well time lapse this bit because otherwise it's going to be a very long video. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so now we've routed all this out. The next plan is to get it wet. And hopefully that will encourage it to just separate a little bit. To just bend a little bit without cracking is the plan. We've still got a long way to go, yeah? Yeah. I'm gonna go with more water. Go on in. That is, yeah, that's getting better. That's getting a lot better, actually. So does it fit? No. Not even if I wanted it to. I think it's a bit tight. Though. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Oh. oh, that's better. <laughs> Obviously there's a, there's a, yeah, there's something in the wall there. There's a pin in the wall. It's a bit tight at the top as well. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy with that. That's all right. But what about the window? Oh, we do that when it fits. Hi, so I've popped in today, it's Sunday, just to try and get a couple of bits done on this before we continue doing the siliconing. 
as unfortunately whilst we're siliconing the vehicle we can't have more than one person in here because it gets a bit wobbly. So plan with this is we've sanded off any rough edges, uh, we've painted over it with a bit of hammerite that should hopefully just prevent it from rusting and uh, then we're going to carpet this area and try and make it look a little bit pretty. So I'm going to do that for you now. Thank you for watching part four. As you've seen, we are nearing completion on this phase of the build and the next episode is potentially the last one. Thank you very much for following the build. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please like and subscribe. Hi, and welcome to the final part of our Bedford restoration. We have gone as far as we're going to go on working on this vehicle and then the customer is going to take it away and do the rest of the build themselves. However, we're hoping they come back to us to have some of the bits done because we'd really like to see further progress on this vehicle. As you can see, this is looking very different from how we started with the vehicle. We've successfully boarded out all of the vehicle and siliconed all of these edges in, as well as going around the windows to give a really nice finish. As you may remember, the electrics that were previously in here were questionable at best. In order to rectify that, we've decided to start again. Uh, all of this will eventually be in a cupboard as the original layout design was intended. Here we've managed to fit the 240 electric point, retaining the original point in the vehicle, which is then going into the Victron battery charger, which charges the leisure battery. And we've also got a basic 12 volt setup here, which is running all of the lights. You may notice the loose cable. That is because the customer is going to install another light in the overhead cupboards once that's installed. To maximize space, we've added the battery under the seat, and that has the cabling running round and tucked away over to where the electrics are in the potential cupboard there, 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 there. Tucked for the electrics, tucked for the electrics, for the electrics, tucked for the electrics in the cupboard. As you may notice, the wiring for the engine bay is still very much left to its own devices. If you are an auto electrician and fancy a challenge, please get in touch. Where possible, we've tried to retain as many of the original features as we could. That includes this original piece of leather, and I'm very excited about the light still works. Right, that's one down. Is that one free as well? No? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to say that's all rotten. <laughs> well, I think we're nearly there. After many hours of getting the inside tidied up, we also had to make sure the vehicle was finally watertight. So we've siliconed around here and cleaned out all of the vents in the windows to hopefully let that water drain out. And we'll see if that's worked in this next clip. Oh, looks good to me. In addition to the windows leaking, 
Also, the water fill up point, the electric hookup point, all of the vents, pretty much everything on this side was letting water in, including the main fuel cap. Therefore, we've had to take each part out, seal it up, put a new grommet in there, and fit it all back again. And thankfully, we now have it all watertight. Thank you very much for watching. This is our last episode on this vehicle until hopefully when we see it again. There are lots of other projects going on and we will be posting videos of those as we complete the projects and showing you our progression throughout this year. We have a very busy summer ahead of us and I look forward to sharing that with you.